mention it all. Mention it all. Goodbye, Kyle. Who's calling who a frog? Love you, baby. Bye. Hello, Beret Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beret Heels. And guys, I, you know, I, 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 I talk too much about like the tea, you know, and, and things that happen like on the daily basis. And I never kind of like really go deep into like certain things, you know, because there are so much tea happening that we try not like keep it, keep it like light, you know, so we can like move forward. But damn, when I heard this for the first time i was like i need to know what is going on in here okay um if you watch or bravo cella on monday with jenny blaze from bravo and blaze she dropped this tea right there that it might be out there but like not everyone almost no one was talking about it you know and i and i start getting like really curious about it and this is involving miss uh julia lemigoba from the real house of miami and her past you know and her kid who passed away or was murdered you know so uh i she she says so many things on that live that i was like oh my god i really need to see what is going on so i definitely went on did a deep dive into this whole thing and find a bunch of information that you know what i was like i just want to share it uh with you so because it's definitely like curious you know it's definitely like a mystery and now that we have eyes everywhere maybe we will help julia to find the truth about this uh, but before we get into it, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do it right now. If you are new here and you want to join the very troop, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, guys. We are on our way to 30K. So if you are new here, please join the family, okay? And we can keep doing things like this and more. So let's talk about this mess. Um, if you have been watching Real Houses of Miami, you already kind of know this. Julia talked about it on an episode, but it was like very fast. And basically, Julia had a baby, you know, a long time ago. And uh, this baby died when he was only six months old. He actually was five months and a half old when he died, okay? And that was basically it, you know, like Julia said, on on the show that there was like a nanny involved and like the, the baby have like shaking syndrome and um but she really she didn't really went really really deep into the whole situation so we were all like oh my god poor julia that's so sad we fall for her and we kind of like move on you know especially because at the same time gordy was like crying because she had a miscarriage um so you know, it, it, it was like we didn't have like the time. You know, there was this was the moment of Julia to like really tell her story, and Gordy really didn't allow her to do that at all. So, uh, when Jenny on Bravo Chela made all all those comments, I definitely went ahead and hit some sources and start like looking around. I went first to the Instagram that that Jenny said on on Bravo Chela, which is this Instagram called Bravo Boo. And she did like a very fast, you know, um, recount of all the events that I'm going to tell you first. And then I'm going to tell you also another things that I found out. Um, so she says that she, that Julia met a billionaire called Edward Stern while he was still married to his first wife, allegedly. You know, after they started the affair, uh, then he went on and he divorced uh, her wife and got together with Julia. Uh, Julia was known because she was Miss USSR in 1990. Okay, so she was, you know, beautiful, you know, a model and like the whole thing. Um, he says over here that he divorced her ex wife and then he went on to marry Julia. But I think according to what I found, she never, he never actually married her and they actually never got married. Uh, then it says the couple soon had a son. His name was Maximilian, but he died after six months under unclear circumstances. 
while he was with his father, he suddenly fell ill and the autopsy showed brain injuries. Uh, it was suspect that Stern himself had killed his son, but there was no evidence. He moved to Switzerland and started seeing a call girl while Julia stayed in Paris where she owned a salon. Stern was very jealous and possessive and followed Julia's every step. Uh, he started seeing a call girl who became his mistress. They had a fe they have fetish parties and he enjoyed latex suits and having dildos up his ass. Then apparently in one session thing went sour when Stern told the cold girl a million dollar is a lot to pay for a whore. So she went on and shot him dead five times in the chest. The mistress was very pissed and she didn't give uh wait it says sorry she didn't give a fuck of like killing Stern. He died in the latex suit head head to toe and with a dildo up his ass. His lover that shot and killed him only got eight years in prison because it was considered a crime of passion and was released on parole after a year. Then Julia and Martina have been married since 2014 and are raising Julia's two daughters in South Florida together. Um... Okay, so this was the first part. So, yes, like they were, like it said over there, you know, Julia was with this guy. This guy's a billionaire. They're having an amazing uh, relationship together. Uh, Julia described him as being like very playful, like a kid. You know, they they enjoy all these things together. I'm I'm thinking, you know, Julia is very flirtatious herself. And she's probably into some kinky stuff. So I'm thinking that they may have done some things together. That's why the relationship maybe like went so well. Now they have this kid and the whole thing goes sour. South, I'm sorry. Um, then this the kid die. And then... I, this is the part that I'm kind of like confused. Like he left Julia. No, he didn't left Julia. They were still together, but he goes to Switzerland, right? He goes to Switzerland and then he starts having an affair with this uh, mistress. Okay, so about the guy. His name was Edward Stern, okay? He was a French banker and he was famously murdered in, Gen in Genova, Switzerland uh, with by this woman they actually have a four-year relationship okay and at the time of his death he was the 38th richest man in france okay now one of the things that we know about stern is that he he was kind of like um very well connected okay he was a banker he comes from a family of bankers that go all the way up to the 19th century. So like he has like a name. Um, he has very influential people around him. Uh, this The president of France or ex-president, I have no idea, uh, Sarkozy was one of his closest like friends. So, you know, when you have the president of a country on your side and you have all these VIP people around you, you are pretty much untouchable. OK, so it kind of makes sense that the circumstances of the death of the baby were like almost made like disappear. When this baby died, they did like a small investigation. They said like, oh, he died from natural causes. And that was it. Like, no one talked about this for a very long time. You know, they told Julia like, oh, I'm so sorry your baby died because he died, you know, and that was it, you know, and then everything kind of started getting like a little bit more suspicious. Now, I started digging around and I found this article from 2010. Okay, we're talking 12 years ago where they're talking about Julia's case and even Martina and everything that went down. So I'm going to uh, like read you a little bit. It says, five years after Stern's death, 
new evidence has come to light, including a previously concealed autopsy report and a note written by the nanny, by the baby nanny, okay? So what? that's the other thing. After the death of the baby, they actually had a nanny, okay? And the nanny disappeared, like nowhere to be found. How they found this note, I have no idea. Um, I think they said it a little bit uh, further. So let's let's keep on. It says, police says it's enough to reinvestigate the baby's death. So the first thing that we need to make clear over here, because I know some people maybe wants to watch this because they think that this is somehow Julia's fault or that she's the bad one. No, this is not the case. Julia is the mother and Julia is trying to do anything on her power to find out what happened to his to her baby, you know? Uh it says over here, Stern was estranged from his wife, Beatrice David Will, uh, with whom he had three children. He was also, it later transpired, enjoying numerous other illicit uh, liations, many of them at sadomasochistic orgies. Even in a city renowned for its hedonism sources, Sources said that the sex parties were held under conditions of utmost security. Armed secret agents monitor every event to ensure the safety, not to mention the anonym, anonym, anon, fuck, Latino moment, guys, these words, the anonym, anonymity of the prominent participants. Uh... It says that Lemigoba has always insisted that she knew nothing of the dark side of Stern's life. I know absolutely nothing about that side. We had a normal relationship based on feelings. Hmm. Okay. I mean, girl, please. But like, I'm, 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 I, let's, let's move on from that one. It says Lemigova and Stern's baby boy was born into this fabulous, wealthy, but sinister war in October 1999, but he died at Necker Hospital in Paris on March 10 of 2000 while in his father's care. Officially, the baby was said to have died from natural causes, but the result of a previously concealed autopsy report revealed that the his bloodstream contains diazepam, okay? Even the small traces of the drug, which is commonly used to treat adults for depression, can prove fatal to a small child. The medical examination also suggests that the baby had been shaking violently, okay? So let's, let's stop over here. Uh, We already, I mean, we already know that this, this kid was sadly killed, okay? This was murder. Now, was it on the nanny side or was the father who killed him? That's the question right here. This just come to my mind. Maybe the father was very annoyed with the kid um, crying all the time. Maybe he thought by giving her this drug, he was just going to sleep. Many of those... Uh, antidepressant actually make you kind of loopy and like make you like fall asleep so maybe he gave him that you know and and, and then he went to sleep or uh, or and i imagine like shaking him to shut him up like oh my god i can this is so horrible i cannot understand people who will do something like this to a baby this guy must be burning in hell. Let's be honest. Okay, it says here, according to a legal source who spoke to the mail this week, in short, Miss Lemigoba believes someone somewhere wanted Maximilian killed. He was a happy, healthy baby, and Miss Lemigoba loved him deeply. The fact that his father was a leading member of Paris society involved in a frighteningly risky social scene clearly created a huge problem for his powerful friends. This may well have been why the baby was murdered. Miss Lemigova will not rest until she finds out exactly what happened. 
At the top of the list of those French po of those French police says they want to interview about Maximilian's death is a Bulgarian nanny employed by Stern who had been caring for the baby in the days leading up to his death. She was apparently employed by Stern for the days when the baby was in his care, and Lemigova only ever knew her by her first name, Maya. After the baby's death, she disappeared without a trace. But police now say they have recovered a handwritten note in which the young woman confided to friends that she feared for the child's life. So what I'm thinking is, okay, either the nanny killed the baby or the nanny was there when the father killed the baby. And because the father was so influential and probably has so much money, probably shot her up. Probably he was like, bitch, here is like, I don't know how many million dollars, leave and never come back. Which in itself, it's still a crime, okay? Because she knew what happened to the baby. Uh, why she said that she, why, why would she send a note to friends saying that she is afraid for the baby's life? I have no idea. Maybe this was her. Well, look, you know, I know that a lot of people are going to be saying like, oh, she should have just gone, have gone to the police. But when you have these kind of influential people, and let's remember, this is not even right now. This was like back, you know, in the early 2000s. Uh, you know, maybe a lot of people, I mean, maybe he just had like a lot of people under, under his belt. So what are you going to do? You know, this, this guy probably said, Take the money and leave on, or I will literally kill you. What is she going to do, right? Of course, a moral thing is like being like, no, fuck it. I'm just going to expose him and tell the truth. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking like if she really wants to find some peace at some point, she would have to just come forward, you know, or at least go to Julia's and tell her the truth of what really went down. Um, but I don't know if that's really going to happen. Okay, it says here that um, according to the to a police source, Mayas first arrived at Miss Lemigova Paris flat, claiming she was from an agency paid for by Stern. The clear implication is that she was a legitimate nurse offering child care. The fear now is that she might have been anything but. This is why it is crucial, crucial that we now find her. Well, don't you know, like, the, the, the what, the, the place that she was coming from, like, the agency? Anyways. Also, among those French police wants to speak to is Cecile Bro, uh, Brossard. So, Cecile Brossard is the former prostitute who killed Storm, okay? So, she was the one who, they were having fun. She put the dildo up his ass. She helped him put the latex uh, suit and then shot him five times. Okay. Uh, the former prostitute who admitted killing 50 year old Stern during a sadomasoch sadomasochistic bondage session at his Geneva home on March of 2005. He was shot four times while tied to a chair and dress head to toe in a latex body suit. Brossard recently returned to France after serving only five years in a Swiss jail for the killing which she readily admitted. Ensuring a short trial which saved the reputation of many VIPs who might otherwise have been dragged into the scandal. If there really was foul play associated with the orgies, including people being killed, then there is a good chance that she will have uh, that she will have some insight into what happened. Brossard was at many of the sex parties and knows exactly who else was involved. Like this is kind of like this whole. Uh, uh, what is the girl that just went to your Maximilian Gouda something? I don't I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Um, 
you know what I'm talking about, right? This is like something like that. I mean, this is involving a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of BAPs. And I don't understand what is the thing with people in power loving to do all this crazy shit. You know, they're always in secret societies, having orgies, uh, like masks, you know, like, like it is so weird. But anyways, you know, I guess, I mean, people have all kinds of kinks and fetishes, you know, so, but they, sometimes they just take it too far. And it's, but it's primarily into like the very wealthy, you know, that they are like, oh yes, let's do like super orgy party, you know, and let's all, you know, have a gang bang in the middle of the pool. And like, they're so weird. Um, okay, let's, let's move on. It says at the time of the murder, Swiss investigator also raised suspicions that French government agent had removed highly significant material from Brossard home in Paris before police searched. Mm -hmm. As well as photograph, this is said to have included address books and phone numbers, as well as private correspondence on computer disks. Evidence that might have continue, contained crucial information pertaining to the death of Lemigova's baby. So, okay, so this is like another thing. Now, now there are baby, like suggesting that someone wanted to kill the baby. Why would someone wanted to kill the baby? Well, this guy was maybe so powerful. Maybe he had some enemies. But maybe he was like, I'm over with hosting these sex parties. And someone was like, I need my sex party. So I'm going to kill that baby. I don't know. You know, like, you know, people have like the weirdest reasons to do shit like this. Um, uh, very powerful people view Brosarf as a whistleblower, and they didn't want any evidence linking her with them. Lemigova herself has met Brosarf at least twice, once in 2004 and again in 2005, and both occasions she said to have implored Brosarf to provide her with information about her dead baby. But according to the Paris legal source who spoke uh, Brosser wa was frightened and uncooperative as far as her baby's death is concerned. Julia has been a stonewall wh wherever she goes. So this is clearly Julia trying to do whatever it takes to find out the killer of her baby. At this point, this was not an accident. At this point, it's very clear this was murder. So we have, okay, did the father kill him? Did the nanny kill him? Did someone else hire the nanny to kill him? Did someone else kill the baby? Like, there are so much things that we don't know. And it is so sad because I can only imagine Julia just wanted to have some kind of closure from this. You know, like, at the end of the day, this is a mother who doesn't know how his, ba his baby, sorry, her baby died. And the only explanation that it was giving to her is basically not acceptable because it said like, oh, it was natural causes. And then we know, okay, it wasn't natural causes. This baby have drugs on the system. This baby uh, suffer from shaking syndrome. So someone literally killed this baby. Like literally. And we don't know in which order. They, did he, they shake him first and then give him the drugs or did they give him the drugs and then shake him? Just a horrible, horrible, horrible uh, situation. And I'm really hoping, at the, I think, okay, look, the prostitute, at the end of the day, I don't think she really, I don't, I'm, I think maybe she hasn't really said anything because what, what can she say? I mean, she's not really linked to the murder. I mean, she was the mistress of the guy, uh, but I, I don't know, I, I mean, I don't think the guy was like, hey, hi, you know, so I killed my kid. Uh, but put me in this latex suit. You know what I mean? But maybe, but I don't think so. So maybe she doesn't really know anything. Um, but the nanny who disappeared, that's, that right there is like, I don't want to say suspect. Well, yes, suspect. But like, I want to say like, she, she has information. She must really know something. Where is this girl? Do they have a picture of the girl? Uh, a description something where was she last seen she probably changed her name i have no idea 
uh, how, how much money she was given or was this nanny actually hired by someone but that's like super like james bond kind of shit you know um that someone like hire this person and maybe she wasn't a nanny but she was actually like a higher murder i don't know anyways that's it guys that's everything that we know so far about julia's story and i i'm i I'm hoping that Julia is going to be able to tell her whole complete story on The Real Housewife of Miami without Gordy interrumping her, okay? Like, probably by herself. Uh, and, yeah, there is really nothing else to say. I don't know what Martina really thinks about that. Uh, that that's going to be topic for another video about the Martinez and Julia's relationship. Um Let's wait and see. I'm just really, really hope that Julia finds some closure someday. Anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below about this one. I know it was a lot of information and it really took me by surprise because I was not expecting to find all of this. Uh, there are really not much. I mean, this is an article for 2010. It has been 12 years since this article came out and I really haven't found anything like to this date about this case so either they shut it down again or i can say if this is involving even the president or ex-president or whatever of france you know that this is going to be um a very you know but you know they are in this thing with prince andrew william no well, everything that happened right now with the royal family, it's just like, I'm, I, I, I don't know their names, but you know what I mean. They caught him. He is in this huge uh, uh, scandal right now. So no one is above the law eventually. Like everything that is done in the dark will come to the light eventually. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. And like always, don't forget to like this video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. And I'll see you in an hour. See ya. Bye.